Tisha Tate in the house. Thank you for joining. I mean, this is just a parade of stars coming through here. Yeah, I was watching when I was getting my makeup done. You guys had the whole, I saw Khabib on here yeah. and everybody, yes. Yeah, so, so this is a pretty huge story, you coming back out of retirement. I, I mean, guess it's been, so. what, four plus years <laughs> since the last everybody time? everybody else is ex as excited as I am. What, what prompted that decision? Um, I just felt it in my heart. I've always been one of those people that have flown by the seat of my pants and just when... When it speaks to me, I just know, you know, it's like when you know, you know, like people say that when they fall in love, when you know, you know, it's like, it's the same thing for the sport. It's like, I'm, I'm in love again. So was it something that you just said, listen, this is what I want to do. My heart's telling me to do this. Or did Dana give you a call and say, Hey, we could no. use you. Dana has been entirely respectful. Like the entire time, like he never bothered me. He never called me. It was like me calling. Actually, I had to hunt him down. I was like, Dana, if you don't answer my calls, like I'm going to come to the PI. I was like, I know where you are. I was like, I will find you because I think he just, he wanted to make sure that it was like, not because I had to, you know what I mean? Like right. financially, he was like, are you okay? Like financially, I was like, no, I'm great. I'm good in like, great financial standing. I'm doing this because I want to. I can't, I, I'll be honest with you right now. I saw him talk about your nose in a recent interview and the fact that you got it fixed and I'm looking at it and it looks perfect. And he's like, I Thanks. told her she shouldn't get it fixed yet. It's she should perfect. wait. It's not perfect, but that's okay. It's like, <laughs> it's not perfect. I still don't breathe out of it very well, but hey, you know, it's the life of a fighter. So. It looks perfect for me. You, you <laughs> it look looks great. It looks fantastic. Um, now, it's, it was really cool to see not just you coming out of retirement, but already having a fight booked. Marion mm -hmm. Renault, July 17. Why was this exact opponent uh, the right one and why was this fight time the exact right time? I mean, the opponent, I don't know. I don't know why, you know, if Marion or knows the right one or whatnot, but that's the one that was put in front of me, and that's the one that I will focus on. Um, I kind of had a, I was, I actually was hoping to fight Yana. I was kind of looking for Yana, but I think she already has something in the works or whatever. But look, Marion Renault is a, she's a spoiler and she's somebody that you really have to take serious. I mean, her submission over Sarah McMahon was something that was like, wow, really impressed me. She's fought a lot of the best women in the world. She's been around for quite some time. And I think, um, correct me if I'm wrong, DC, like the, one of the most important things like you have to keep in mind when somebody has... This is the retirement fight for her, that's, right? That's the beauty of it. She has nothing left like to give, so she's going to put everything. There's no next fight. Like no. She's going to put everything she has into this, right? Well, she's going into her last fight, and you're coming back. So, right, it sets the perfect stage for mm -hmm. what this fight is going to be. I mean, I can't wait to watch. I'm excited that you're back, you know? <laughs> it's, uh, we were talking about this recently and talking about the athletes from Strike Force that are still competing at a high level, and it seemed as though the only one left is Derek Brunson. But Misha, you're back now and going to have our Strike Force banner flying for a little while longer, right? Exactly. <laughs> yes, I got some life left in me, some gas left in the gas tank, and I'm, I'm just in a really good place. You know, that's, that's what's the main difference between the Misha Tate that left and the Misha Tate that's coming back. It's like I'm just in such a beautiful place in my life. Yeah. And I'm, I'm full, like I'm ready to go. You know, Misha, you watch your social media and everything. You're over in um, Asia, right? You're over in, in Asia, Singapore, or yeah. Singapore, right? Mm -hmm. And everything seems so perfect. You had a family. Mm -hmm. You had a big time job. Everything seemed to be going the right way for a retired person or yeah. in a woman that has so many, so much desire to be and do mm -hmm. big things. But why now? Everything was perfect. It is perfect. So like why now? Why, why now to come um, back and fight? You know what? I think the sport's been calling for me for quite some time, to be honest. And I just think it's time I answer. Like, my heart has been telling me. It was like since I, when I had my son nine months ago, I was like, that was the moment. I was kind of like, you know, the pandemic hit. So many things kind of hit close to home. What's important in life? Time is important. Family is important. These things are important. Goals and dreams are important. And a lot of people kind of had that shut down, right? And so we, it was the fourth slowdown, and it really made me reevaluate. Like, what do I really want in life? Yeah. I want family and I want to, I want greatness. I want to be great again. Now, is that a big part of your inspiration to want to fight again, having your child? I mean, it, it is, but it, it's not my driving factor. You know, I, I'm still a competitor at heart. You know, I still, I love to get in there and train. You know, Aljo, you see me in there. Like, you yes. ran some practices. Like, you know, I'm, I've still got a lot. To, to give and, and sure, like I want my daughter to see like her strong mommy. I want to know everything that she's capable of. My son as well, but um, you know, I'd be lying if I wasn't saying like I'm really doing this for myself. I'm doing this because I really want to, and I want to be the baddest woman on the planet again. Now, a lot of people talk about making a comeback, but 
you know, it takes a while for them to have a fight booked, but you mm -hmm. had yours booked pretty much right away. So, I mean, I've seen you training, but mm -hmm. how long have you been training, like, prior to that? Like, did you know already, like, this is what I'm going to do and kind of had an idea, like, yeah, yeah I'm going to get back in the game? So it's not like I ever really stopped training, you know, um, besides obviously the hiatus, you have to take a little bit with pregnancy. But even then, you know, I'm hitting mitts, I'm watching the sport. But what I can say, the benefit of that was that I was actually able to sit back and really um, look at the sport and dissect it from like, a, you know, from the outside perspective, right? So you learn a lot when you just get to sit back and you don't have to focus on, you know, training tomorrow, how to do this, how to do that. Like, I just got to observe and I found I learned a lot. I like I got to coach, and I mean, these you guys probably know as you sit and you watch fights, like you you learn as you watch, right? You learn as you break down. The more that you get to sit on the outside, and so that's kind of what I've been what I've been doing. And that's probably why you see so many athletes improve as they do this type of stuff, right? Yes, the analyst yes. work, right? And that's what I've been doing. I've done a lot of analyst work. I've done, um, you know, I've coached, and uh, I just feel very clear, and I feel mature. I feel like I'm in a different point in my life where, you know, I'm not, uh, I've got this balance. I've got this center that I didn't have before. And before it was very chaotic. You know, I was, towards the end of my career, I was really struggling with depression, to be honest. I had a lot going on in my personal life. And, um, you know, even prior to the Holly fight, you know, almost at that one slipped through my fingers. I just had too much going on and I didn't know how to balance it all. And I think with time away and maturity and all the things that I've simplified my life down to, like what's really important, boiling it down to basics, um, I just have a much better outlook and I'm, I'm definitely gonna come back in with, you know, a lot of fire, a lot of passion and wholeheartedly because I want to. Excited. With that <laughs> expanded sort of balanced outlook and motherhood looks beautiful on you, by Thank the way. You. Um, what what are the goals that you have in in returning? Are you are you looking to chase down titles, or is this more about you and your timing? And and you'll fight when you feel like fighting. Okay, so I so I want to stay busy, right? Because I had a lot of um, I had a lot of time away from uh, the sport. So now I think I need to make the most time is of the essence, and I think uh, I want to stay busy. You know, I, I I want to get this fight over in July, and I'd like to fight three times in the year. And you know, I'm on kind of a two year plan. I want to see what I can do in two years. It's that's about as far in the future as I can look, and we'll see what happens after that two years. But staying busy, yes. You're one of the pioneers in uh, women's MMA. The evolution to watch that of, of the division with Wei Li and Amanda mm -hmm. and Valentina and how that's gone. That's so What's that incredible. been like for you? Oh, it's incredible. I mean, these women are just fantastic. They're truly ambassadors of the sport as well, and they, they have um, done a wonderful job carrying the torch and putting on amazing fights. And that fight between Wei Li and uh, Zhang, uh, there was, I mean, Wei Li and uh, Yuana, excuse me, was incredible. Um, you know, one of the best women's fights we've ever seen. So, I mean, they've done a fantastic job, but I'm just excited to come back and add some spice in the division. That's how I see myself coming in, you know? I'm just adding a little, I'm adding a little bit of flavor, a little bit of spice, yeah. What, what, in there. what you were, you were the it person. You were the star when you left. You, you've watched Amanda rise to mm -hmm. that, you know, goat status. Mm -hmm. um, what are you gonna inject back in to women's MMA now. And what's it been like to watch Amanda? Amanda's great. And I will say, you know, when I fought her, she wasn't the Amanda that we knew. You know, I didn't really know. I mean, I saw her fight against Kat Zingano, and you know, you go back and you look at those things. And then sh since that point, she's really, her trajectory has been insane. So. I look at that and I'm like, wow, you know, I didn't know at the time, but now I know. You know, I've been able to sit back and I've been able to watch her and I've been able to see the greatness she's accomplished as well as, you know, many of the other women. But I'd be lying if my goal wasn't, you know, eventually long term goal. I know it's a tall order, but I want to get back there and I, I would like that rematch. You know, if my girl Juliana doesn't get it done first, you know, because I know she should be next in line and I think she will probably, she has a great chance of getting it done. It's, it's that style of fighting, right? The, the, the grind. So, um, that's what I think. That, that is a rematch that I think we would all love to see. Omar Morales uh, coming in at 146 as he steps off the scale. Um, all right, let's talk about what we have coming up tomorrow. And these guys behind us, the, uh, the baddest man on the oh, planet, yeah. and uh, Stipe and Francis <laughs> Ngannou. How do you see that one going down? All right, so look, I I just love Francis Ngannou. I think he's fantastic, and I think he's improved tremendously. And I know there's a lot of questions because 
Well, look at his last few fights. We haven't seen very much except what he always does, right? He goes out there and knocks people out quickly. It's maybe not the case against Stipe, but the areas I can tell you he's improved tremendously. Conditioning, that's not going to be as much of an issue as it was the first fight. His wrestling has gotten a lot better. And when you're fighting somebody like Stipe, right, fight IQ is really important as well. So choosing when he fights in spurts. Um, obviously, I think you see where I'm leaning with this. I'm going Team, Fr team Francis. I think that he can get it done. Um, I think some failed shots. Wrestling is one of the most exhausting things to do. You get a big man like uh, Francis in there who can weigh on you, who can pull you down, who can make you tired. Um, and then he's got those those hands of hell. I mean, they just fists of fury. It, it only takes one. 25 minutes is a long time to not let one of those land when you have a much improved athlete. He's got a serious training camp behind him. He's got good coaches. He's got the conditioning. He's taking use of the Performance Institute, I mean, everything is dialed in, and it just wasn't the case the first time. It wasn't the case. He was kind of just thrown in preemptively. So um, I love Stipe as well. He's a great guy and is the you know, greatest heavyweight of all time. So it's, you know, again, it's a tall order for Francis, but I think Francis has the tools to get it done this time. I think it's a great point about how settled everything is before yes. this fight as opposed to the last fight. That was Kama Worthy, uh, who just weighed in at 155 mm -hmm. and a half. Misha, we are so pumped that you're back. Uh, I, it's cool that... You're, you're just a different person now. You have a family. You have a lot going on. But I, I can't am. tell you how cool it's going to be to see you get back in there. Cool. Um, I know all UFC fans are looking forward to that. And thanks for stopping by the desk. It was wonderful. Thank you, guys. Absolutely.